this edition of Convo Fango. Today we are joined by the directors and writer, is that right, of For the Sake of Vicious? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am your host, Angel, aka Horror Girl Problems. So thank you guys for joining us today and hanging out. Thank you for having us. Thank you for <laughs> having us. Yeah, thanks yeah, the craziness. So that title is no lie. This shit is vicious and brutal and violent and <laughs> rageful. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, uh, tell us about what the movie is about. Well, it's about a, uh, a nurse who comes home from a night shift on Halloween night, thinking that she's going to have a good night taking her kid out trick or treating. Uh, and it goes to hell when she comes home to find that she's got essentially a borderline maniac in her house. Uh, keeping another man hostage and accusing him of doing something incredibly awful and heinous. And she finds herself unwittingly becoming a participant in this sort of kitchen courtroom setting where she's acting as judge, jury, and executioner as this, this whole story unfolds in front of her, only to find that unbeknownst to all of them that there's this hell that's about to descend upon their house and completely ruin their Halloween night. <laughs> or make it awesome. It just depends on how you look at it. So you know what? It's all a matter of perspective, I guess, right? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for the record, that's not the Halloween night that I would sign up for. I just, I just put that out there. <laughs> no, it's not great. It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel, you have anything you want to add to that? No, no, he's good. <laughs> Nailed it. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, what was the inspiration behind this? <sighs> Who wants to tell it? Uh, Reese and I are self-proclaimed legitimate mall rats. Uh, we have an excellent mall here. It's called Stone Road Mall in Guelph, Ontario. Um, it reminds me, it still has a little old school vibe to it. So, you know, him and I would always go to the food court, get our, either Caribbean Queen or Jimmy the Greek. And we'd sit across each other and just like throw ideas, movie ideas randomly at each other when we're not making movies, our own separate movies. And uh, coincidentally enough, we, we just came off our own feature films, and you know, it's what we do as friends. We go to the mall and hang out, look at movies, and eat mall food court food, and just throwing ideas out. And we were both very, pretty angry with the way things went, and that we're, you know, certain elements in the industry and whatnot. Um, so our, our, our ideas were uh, getting very angry sounding. So this concept kind of stuck to the wall. Um, originally, it was supposed to take place in the summer during a blackout, mm -hmm. and um, the people invading the home were actually SWAT, SWAT team, a police SWAT team. Um, and then Reese kind of took the outline uh, that I threw together and, and created this amazing script. Um, and then, yeah, you want to take it a, the rest of it there, Reese? Yeah, I mean, I think he pretty much hit the nail on the head. I mean, the big thing that we like to nail home with people is again there's just this sense of anger within us when we set out to do this which is just industry where we were at a certain point in our lives how things were going and it was just this need to be like let's just write something that's for us and it we don't give a sh can we swear on this we you good? can say yeah you can say you can say shh <laughs> yeah, you can say shh Canadian. We have to be very polite and ask permission beforehand. Oh, that's it. That is very sweet of you. You can say shit. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Can I say the F word? Is that fine too? Heck yes, you can. Yes. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so we just wanted to make something that we didn't give a fuck what people thought. You know, it was just, it was like we did something dark, something twisted, something especially violent. Um, and just, we also wanted to get across this idea of it's sort of like a double feature and it's a perfect teaming of our brains, you know, or it's like you get one half of a movie that tells this sort of courtroom trial story essentially in this house. And then it flips on its head and gives you a 180 and just gives you what ultimately becomes a very twisted and violent home invasion story and kind of is a nice blend of genres. But most importantly, like I said, we just wanted to make something that was aggressive. We felt that, um, with certain smaller films specifically that when it was coming to like the, the really hard nosed, hard, like edgy stuff, it just kept hitting this wall. And it's like, why don't they ever get past that point? <laughs> like it never feels like they go the full distance. Like, and we just want to go there. We didn't have to answer to anybody. And even when we got our producers involved, um, they didn't put any walls or barriers around us other than, you know, this is, this is your budget. This is your shoebox that you're allowed to play in. 
but whatever you do in that shoebox, he can do whatever he wants. So yeah, it's pretty and amazing. They never even showed up to set. I know no. our producer Abby, who's amazing, <laughs> and Raven Banner, who are who are amazing. They never even sh showed up to set. Like Reese and I were just left to our own, which is crazy. Usually the producers show up, right? Like on a set. Right. Um, Thank God they didn't. I signed, I'm like, <laughs> dude, if they if they showed up to set on some of those days, <laughs> that would have been it. Yeah. <laughs> How fun though! You guys just basically had free range to play. Then it's like, okay, greenlit, go, go do your thing, and then you did. <laughs> and that that was pretty much it. I mean, we went through a few iterations of the script with them. And as Gabe said, it was very different when we started. The SWAT thing was the first thing to go. And then it became like sort of the invaders coming into the house. And then sometime as we were getting closer to it, just because, you know, productions get pushed due to budget and time, we're getting closer and closer to the fall. And I remember we were in my apartment and we were looking at each other and he's like, I've got an idea. I don't know if you're going to like it. And I'm like, I've got an idea. I don't know if you're going to like it. <laughs> and he said, we should set this during Halloween. And it was like, the light bulbs went off and we're oh my god yes like of course we should set this and then they have the masks and it makes it scarier and then it also adds this element of like maybe that's why people aren't calling the cops because they think it's a crazy haunted house going on or whatever you know like it just it it, it kind of gave us more free reign to play creatively with that that aesthetic so and we got to shoot in october Yes. Really. Yeah, oh, in October, nice. which was even more amazing, right? Because then all the stores have Halloween candy out. And you can yeah. out. It very much creates a vibe. I mean, obviously, I'm biased, and I just love Halloween. And I, anything <laughs> that, that can capture that feeling is great. But it already, okay, so like we know it's set on Halloween, so I feel like we already have this like vibe and this aesthetic going, and then you just kind of like feed into that. But you have like jack-o'-lanterns, and then exactly as you said, like these fucking maniacs are wearing masks, but it's like, okay, that's not that's not weird. Like I'm not, <laughs> it's not, yeah. it's not a July evening where I'm like, huh. Where are those like devil masked <laughs> dudes going? I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah whatever. People in masks. Yeah. And then they just wreak havoc and no one's really paying attention. <laughs> totally. Like a little bit of a free past, which adds to, elevates the horror a little bit. Cause you're like, yeah, there's no help coming. Cause nobody is like sounding any alarms by seeing yeah. any of this shit. <laughs> exactly. And I think we leaned more into it originally in the script. Like we really pushed more Halloween elements and just, you know, time and budget. Like you just couldn't pull some things off. Like mm -hmm. I know we had a sequence where she got out of the house briefly and like we had tons of trick-or-treaters and like you just really nailed home this event like wow there's a whole world going on outside of this but you know time and money and budget right <laughs> i think we had two <laughs> trick-or-treaters show up and we're like well there we go so <laughs> but it still works you know what i mean it's like okay ideally we'd be like we have this giant suburban neighborhood with like a thousand trick-or-treaters going around but then it's like Okay, and then how do we scale that back and still convey that? And then you did. It's like yeah, ding dong, yeah. and you've got like the three little trick or treaters, and it's like okay, you're conveying that. You've got the jack o' lanterns on the porch, and I'm like I'm getting very much the sense that this is a Halloween night. So. Yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it yeah. still works. <laughs> Thank God. So. <laughs> so, where did you guys shoot this? Uh, we he shot. Said, do not ask me that question. He's like, this was on the list of questions yeah. to not. <laughs> like, I am done. This interview is over. <laughs> What did I fucking say about location questions? <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's where Gabe draws the line. Uh, we <laughs> shot it in a little, I, yeah, it's a tiny little city, probably about an hour outside of Toronto, Ontario, called Cambridge. We had originally planned on building the house as a set, the interior, and we had a location set up for that, a studio space. Uh, and then we lost our production designer very near the production, very near the time we were going to start. I mean, um, and it became a mad rush to be like, okay, well, we've got to find a place. Uh, we were calling demolition companies. We were calling everybody. And I had a contact with a contracting company through a family member. And they said, listen, we've got this house. We're demolishing it in two months. Uh, just give us a few bucks to turn the power and water back onto it. Uh, and then you guys can completely take it over and do whatever you want. And I, I said, like, are you sure? And they went, yeah. And I'm like, no, are you sure? Because I'm like, we're going to fuck this place up. Like, we're going <laughs> to, like, it is going to be a, we're going to drop a bomb in this place. And they said, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, and then Gabe and I took over as production designers. And it was just a mad rush to get the house ready. I think we had maybe three weeks before we started. Yeah, it was uh, a shit show. Yeah, it was a shit show. And then we just... <laughs> That was that house, and uh, we and we destroyed it big time. So, 
slightly stressful, but then you got to take your stress out on the house and be like, we're just going to tear this shit down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially the last yeah, time. Behind the scenes video of uh, after the shoot, you know, lighting firecrackers off in the house and, and <laughs> sledgehammers going nuts on walls and sinks yeah. and stuff. Like everything that you would want to do, right? To right. Leave. Yeah. Everything you would want to do, but like we're never allowed to do that stuff. But now exactly. you're like, hell yeah. Watch your eyes. You're not yeah. wearing any protective glasses. Yeah. <laughs> this is all the is... shit I wanted to do when I was 13, and now I'm going to do it. <laughs> exactly. And the best part is, is that when we left and we were done, we said, do you want us to clean this up at all? And they said, no, just leave it. And they didn't tell the demolition company what had happened to the house. <laughs> so they came in and it's just like glass everywhere, blood literally everywhere, walls, carpet. <laughs> and they gave them about five to 10 minutes of going through the house being like, what the hell happened in here? Before they finally went, ah, ha, ha, yeah, that's a movie, so. <laughs> there was not a mass murder in here, don't No, worry. there was not a mass murder, no. Yeah, there's a lot of blood in the movie and a lot of a lot of spurting blood. So I imagine walking into that house post production would have been. <laughs> yeah. How did, it, how did it, tell us how, tell us how it smelled, Gabe? What did you think of the smell? Oh, I don't even want to talk about the smell. It was. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the trailer alone by the end of it smelled like hockey sweat, rotten cheese. Oh, oh God! <laughs> and the, the house had that like candy blood smell, but then it was smelled like hockey sweat because you have all these people in it. So, you know, like a hockey bag sweat, like it just has this like really rancidy smell or like with blue cheese. I love blue oh, cheese God. Crackers, but like <laughs> just that mix. And I have a really bad gag reflex. Yes, you do. Um, Priceless. It was, it was just like a Reese would have to go in sometimes to get things because I just, I legit couldn't. Like I'd be like, oh, like outside. <laughs> It was, well, remember it, when the pipe oh, burst? Fuck. They had a pipe burst on set one day too, and the, the plumbing that carries fecal matter through the house <laughs> burst into oh, one of the nice sets in the kitchen. So Reese has a background a little bit about these plumbing. So Reese, why don't you tell a plumbing story? Oh, it's not that exciting. It's like he said, the toilet upstairs. Somebody used it and went a little too crazy, and oh, it God. it uh, one of the pipes went and it leaked into the kitchen that we were shooting in. And it's just like this, you know, gray water, if you will, that just came <laughs> raining down onto the table. And like Gabe said, I have a little bit of a plumbing background. So I went and the quickest fix just to get through the day was to create like a plastic barrier. So all oh day, it was just like this collecting <laughs> oh, no. bag that everybody would go in and be like, is that, uh, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I think the worst for me though, is that we were collecting, we weren't doing dump runs, so we would take all the garbage bags and we'd shove them into that little outdoor hut that for like storing the garbage. And then we came back the next week and the raccoons had gotten into it. Yeah. Oh, and there was God. garbage and just like garbage, you know, the juice that collects? <laughs> and it was everywhere. And that's what you were dry heaving about. That's what I remember. The juice. It looks there, like orange juice. With I remember cabbage. standing outside rebagging and just seeing you on the street corner just. <laughs> Anyways, we got way off topic. Oh here. God, no, this is great. I mean, this is <laughs> disgusting in 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 ways that I didn't realize it was going to be disgusting. I was thinking like, oh, disgusting blood and guts. No, this is a different level yeah. of disgusting. Wow. I also have um, a nephew that plays hockey, so I, I like I know that very distinct smell of yes. like a Just, hockey bag. There and you go. That's <laughs> right in there and burns. I also have a horrible gag reflex and just you guys like describing this is enough. Like yeah. my stomach is like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to not gag on camera. <laughs> that was great. Just so good. Yeah. So it's a literal shit show at times then. All yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and after all that, you guys still got it made. You stuck it out you made it happen. You're like, there's shit we spewing did. everywhere. And Reese <laughs> was like, don't worry. I'm going to capture it in this. So it doesn't rain down on our heads. <laughs> action yeah and then i had to pull it down at the end of the day let me tell you oh so. god <laughs> i don't know how do you even go about that i'd be like in like a hazard suit or something i <laughs> didn't have time for it it was just like bare hands here we go so. that was oh, pre covid god. world eh? imagine that, that. Was oh. yeah it was, that was really something but you're oh, right sure. most importantly we got through it but yes every day yeah. on that shoot ended up being chaos management because mm -hmm. there was we were prepping beforehand for months for a version of the movie that we didn't end up making because we didn't build the set. So yeah. all of a sudden you put Gabe and I in this new house, in this new location, 
very very tight quarters too like the how the movie doesn't sell how small that house oh, is. Oh, it's made for hobbits or dwarves. Like, yeah, an like really? Like, <laughs> like, we have no idea who lived there before or what. Well, actually, we do have some idea, but like, just like hobbits. trying to, try, <laughs> hobbits, yes, trying to maneuver through the house and figure it out. And not only that, but it's like there's no room to put people. So we rented that trailer that we put outside. Camera gear went in the basement. Um, and then we had like a room upstairs that we kept all our props that we shared with the camera team and then we had a back room that doubled as like the change room and the makeup room and the hangout room and oh yeah. my god like thinking about it now it actually stresses me out <laughs> and just like it was so tight in there and the tensions were so high every day because you couldn't get away from each other yeah you're just yeah, on top of everybody we, all the time we yeah. made we built change rooms for the actors in there yes. i got a wooden curtain rod oh, wow. nowhere, just to keep things you know because they need privacy as well on set right um so that was just that was crazy because you needed everything there because we didn't have time right so everyone needed to be accessible and we had to build that bathroom ourselves for oh, that. Right, yeah. We built the bathroom ourselves just oh, recently. Yeah. <laughs> um, luckily, there was a Walmart about uh, like a 10 minute drive. Yeah. And I remember one night we were there working the house, like, because our production designer quit and we were just doing everything ourselves, Reese and I and his lovely wife. And um, we were like, oh, God, like, okay, well, should we do the floors tonight? Should we rip? Let's rip up the floor in the bathroom because it was an old bedroom. So we ripped the carpet out. Of the old bedroom and we were going to make that the bathroom so we actually had a usable bathroom in the house and underneath the carpet there was like this like what was it like rubber like like it's old like black blasted dust rubber, rubber. <laughs> so we didn't realize it was under we vacuumed all that and i think it was like around 10 30 at night walmart closes at 11 here we we're like okay let's just paint the floors tonight and then just burn into walmart at 11 at night getting paint coming back painting the floors just things that you don't do. Yeah. Cheeseburgers yeah. and milkshakes. It was amazing. <laughs> and popcorn. Hey. Lots of popcorn. So. Oh, see, you sold me with that. I would have helped you guys paint those floors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there, there, there's fiends like us just shoving popcorn in our mouth. <laughs> I still remember the one night. I was, it was you and I after like a 20 hour day and it was you and I trying to saw through a door to make it shorter oh, to fit. God. And it's That's just the thing. In these old homes, the doors... They're not like new places where all the doors like, oh, if we take off this bedroom door and put it on the bedroom next to it, it will fit. No, 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 no. In these old homes, each bedroom door was completely different for some weird reason. So you could take off the bedroom door and swap it for another door, but you either had to cut the vertical side, you had to cut the bottom off. Um, and I remember cutting a door and we didn't even have to, what did we cut it with? What did we saw it with? She said like the shittiest little like saw, you know? <laughs> And I'm like sitting on it to keep it stable. And just... We were in a mini, we were in a mini hallway yeah. with a stairwell. Like you would just do this, and your elbows would hit the wall. Oh god! And we're just well, looking at each other, just <laughs> sweating and st oh my god, it was. And like remember, like we were stapling the carpet in on the stairs yeah. so it would stay. <laughs> yeah. And then we had to go shoot the movie. So, you know, yeah. And there you go. So you built a whole ass house, basically, and then had to go shoot the movie. Yeah. It's a good it's, thing you guys are handy and crafty with stuff like that, because what the hell? I, I don't know. We, I don't know how we would have survived. So. Yeah, like, what if you didn't know plumbing stuff? Or what if you didn't know, like, I don't know, how to saw a fucking door to, like, make it fit where you need to put it? There's, it, it sounds so silly, because we always joke that it sounds good, but I'm like, Nobody else could have made this movie but Gabe and I. Like, you, I don't think there's not many people I think that could be put in that situation and get through it and survive. So, it would have yeah, been great. Been, this is this is enough of this shit. Yeah, we I put think up that's with a fair a assessment. It yeah. sounds like. Well, you know, it's the almost smell like we alone. Should get torture. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's this hard. Let's make it harder. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are you guys going to put that in your contract for your next movie? Like, no, no. I know it's like a, a bigger budget on this, but we refuse to sign on unless we can be like tackling actual shit and yeah. you know, like cobbling that's... together plumbing <laughs> pipes and things. <laughs> but I mean, that's just it though, right? It's like, this is what we do. We, we, <laughs> we have like, we are raised from a certain breed of filmmakers that like, you just do everything. Right. Like I, it's it's funny to me because respectfully, and we were working with some very talented individuals, 
but they did not see eye to eyes with us most of the time. And they're like, well, you can't do that. And I'm going, well, what the fuck else are we going to do? Like, you can't hire don't, anybody don't, else. Don't, don't, don't drill through the hole. You'll get electrocuted. Well, if I drill a hole through a wall, through the floor, through the bub, we can put a light on the ceiling. We get 360 D camera angles. Not worry about, oh, you can't do that. What about the wiring? Like, Forget the wiring. If I get electrocuted, I get electrocuted. I ran to Home Depot, got the Dremel build drill bit for it, got my drill, went upstairs, drilled a hole through the ceiling to put that cord up. Oh, Still here. It's like, that's it. You, you just, you have to do what you got to do to make the days, no matter what it takes. And no matter... If, if, much, if we're drilling is, through holes with electrical wire, we don't even know where the electrical wiring is. And Reese is getting fecal matter splattered on his face <laughs> by fixing plumbing. Then at least you know when we ask the actors or crew to do something, yeah. it won't be that bad. Yes. Right. Can, can you fall on this coffee table that's a breakaway? Or can you just like step to your left a bit? Hey, can you just like kneel and stay on your knees for 10 minutes? <laughs> Yeah, there is there is nothing that we wouldn't put people through that we weren't willing to do ourselves. So right, and I mean, if there was blood spraying or fight, like we were right in there like a dirty yeah. sheep. So, anyways, we've gone on this crazy. Point is, is that somehow in all of this, we shot a movie. So you know, yeah. like, and it's available for people to watch, not just like we, we did. We were dealing yeah. with shit and in the trenches, and we made a movie, and yeah. it's screening in my mom's backyard. No, it's yeah. like people can watch it. People can watch it. So join us and experience our torture with us. So. We, just, we just know that any other fellow independent filmmakers listening to us or watching us, whatever, they know exactly what we're talking. They know what's <laughs> up. Yeah, they know, <laughs> they know the drill. Been there. Yeah, totally. So is it true that your actors did all their own stunts? Yes. Nice. So when you were casting, was that something that, like, were you like, okay, are you also well-versed in stunts? Or did you let them know, like, hey, you're probably going to be doing your own stunts in this? Or it just happened when you were on set? I think, oh, see, you threw another question for me. It's like, <laughs> I'm nope. sorry. <laughs> Keep it. asking from the, from the forbidden ask list. <laughs> um, no, we had, they knew what they were getting into. We made it very clear, especially the two weeks beforehand. We're like, this is going to be a down and dirty, gritty shoot. And we told them during the auditions, too, that, like, this is a very visceral, intense film. And, you know, we, we will take good care of you. The stunt team safety is always their number one priority. So if they didn't feel they could do it, they wouldn't put them through it. Um, so they knew exactly what they were getting into, but they were all game for it. And luckily, with the exception of, I think, Nick hitting his head, like, we had very, very few, there were no, like, real injuries on set. It was, it was actually incredibly safe. Just saying something because those fight scenes, like those stunt guys, like those stunt guys are taking real hits, you know, like yeah. those are not, yeah. like they're not pulling their punches, like they're going into glass and, you know, there's not a lot of prop weapons around. Those are real. Well, they were actually bleeding, but I feel like that comes with the stunt, you know, the thing. What about the, the mirror? Remember the mirror? Adam yeah. Adam yeah, yeah. The mirror constantly. Yeah. We had this yeah. mirror that just wouldn't break. <laughs> and he was prepared to be thrown into it. Uh, yeah. So the mirror was on the wall. Uh, it was like a hexagonal big stop sign type mirror. And, you know, he was prepared. He had this mask on underneath his mask. He had like all sorts of stuff to protect, you know, none of his skin was showing and then he had his armor on. And he would be thrown into that mirror. And guess what would happen? We had the cameras rolling. We were like, oh, it's going to break. It's going to look great. It's going to bash into it, right? Bounces off the mirror. Oh, God. <laughs> it was like it, it's literally like it was like a bouncy ball like it was so yeah. weird to watch because you see this grown man just armored up throwing himself to the mall and then going boing yeah you're like what's going on i think it took three or four takes uh eventually our uh main fight uh coordinator tj he had this like thing he had to like break the bottom of the mirror yeah. for it to work and then i think it worked the second time it didn't even work the first time when he did it oh god um, but just <laughs> yeah it's on the blu-ray too you can see it we we kept it all oh is it on the blu-ray yeah yeah it made it to the blu-ray oh, so. oh nice you just yeah. watch him like bouncing off of the mirror yeah. like a dozen times <laughs> and for the right like that blu-ray behind the scenes like that does not do the behind the scenes of the movie justice like i feel like <laughs> we didn't we never had the camera on during the really intense stuff so yeah, I want to see you like actually. fixing the pipe and all that. Yeah, stuff. I know none of that's in there. No, no, no. Oh, no. 
<laughs> on the next one. Make sure you're like constantly yes. rolling on the BTS. Okay. Yeah. Roll everything. Yeah. yeah. Get it all. We'll fix <laughs> your editing. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so you guys, you said it's a very confined space, right? But you faked it very well because there's a shit ton of action. Like there's so many fight sequences on here and they're like very elaborate choreographed fight sequences. But these guys are like in these tiny hallways and now I'm thinking about it and I'm like, oh fuck, yeah, you also had to fit like a crew in there, camera and lighting and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like... So that was that was nice because I would never have guessed like I it didn't even dawn on me like hey that's a very narrow hallway and they had to fit all these people in here and able to capture that footage to begin with let alone yeah. these guys bouncing back and forth and like strangling each other and killing each other down the hallway. Yeah, a lot of it was compartmentalized and sectioned off and just even like we had to be really choosy with our lighting so we had to make sure the lighting enabled us that you could point the camera everywhere and you wouldn't have to move something like a stand or something like that because when you have these really rugged not the fight scenes weren't improv they looked like they could have been they were they were meant to look sloppy but they weren't going to be perfect so like we had to make sure that if the actors are in, in the fighting moved out of frame that the camera could follow it and not be so restricted where as on some sets you know if you move over oh there's mm -hmm. the end of a flat or whatever right um so we, we made sure going in ahead of time that, you know, that was one of the key important things. Like we should be able to run through this house with the camera and nothing's in the way, really. Yeah. That's why you're drilling through floors in the middle exactly. of the night and chance and getting busy. electrocuted, right? <laughs> but it was tricky trying to find the most economical and interesting ways to shoot the fights. I mean, luckily we had um, our camera operator, our primary camera operator, Alistair, was really good at like he could throw himself into most yeah. situations and he did he wasn't afraid of like okay like these fight scenes i'm just gonna get right in there mostly yeah. we had two cameras but the, like the primary action cam was alistair or even at some points it's it's gabe and i were shooting scenes too so it's just um but it was really tough figuring out the best way to do it and sometimes you were able to get flashy with it and sometimes like when you're doing the bathroom fight like it was it was just complete chaos like it doesn't you could only fit, I'm trying to think, like, most everybody was outside in the hallway, and I think there was only maybe four of us in there, but it was so tight to try and move in that space. Oh, God, I think it's just it gives me PTSD <laughs> thinking about it, so. And it was so hot, too, like, it just. Oh, God. <laughs> like, the, the, that feel, and I remember that day we did the bathroom fight, I had the flu. It's clammy, it's right? clammy, yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you had the flu. The night before, he's like, I don't know if I can come to I'm like, dude, you got to fucking come tomorrow. <laughs> I was pretty and, uh, sick. That next day, he was there. And I think at the end of the night, I like, so like, you get up in the morning, you shoot all day till like midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. 2 a.m., he's like, looks at me, he's like, dude, I think I'm better now. Yeah, I recovered like, for that entire sickness <laughs> just through the day. <laughs> just, just, you just sweat sweating. it all out. Yeah. <laughs> all I did was set. like, I just stood in that bathroom fight and it's like, I sweated out and I drank honey and hot lemons. And I remember, like, Gabe would pop into the room, hey, buddy, here's a little cup of noodle soup for oh. you. <laughs> and I would just take that. And then when we finished the scene at, like, 2 or 3 in the morning, I was like, I think I worked through that entire sickness. Like, I'm good now. So, there was something that went around on that set. I remember it was Dara, the makeup artist. She showed yeah. up sick. Yeah. And that was just, like, dog. clockwork. Yeah. And just passed around. Just passed around, yeah. It's like I said, like Gabe was saying, everything that could go wrong was going wrong on that Right. Shoot, so. I think that was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. What was it like co-directing this together and collaborating? Like how, like a typical scene, how does that like walk us through how that goes? Like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, we had a really good idea. Like we, we did storyboard a lot, you know, I think it was even a year before, or not a year, but like, you know, six or seven months before we shot, we, we storyboarded and stuff as we were going through the script and stuff, making a shot list um, at, at his apartment and whatnot. And then, um i mean on set it was we we did have to divide our duties to a certain extent and just utilize kind of like okay there's two of us i trust you you trust me so i was i was more heavily involved with the camera department and the dop and some photographers send up the shots and stuff so we would i would work with them we would figure out the look the shots where, where the camera's going to go and whatnot and then reese would come in with the actors um block work with them on that and then we would essentially roll um, in between those would be moments where just Reese and I would be on set together and no one else. 
and him and I would map out, you know, camera and all this kind of preliminary stuff pretty quick. Um, but that's kind of where it was weighted. I was more in the camera and the visual, and then he was more dealing with the actors. And it worked out great. You know, we, we just, we trust each other. We've been involved in each other's movies for over 10 years. Now, everything we do, you know, he's involved in some way, even our next projects, um, you know, we're, we're helping each other out all the time. So it just kind of worked. We know each other's quirks mm -hmm. and things. So it's... Yeah, the most important thing was knowing that we both had the same movie in mind at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Like that's, even if you were having disagreements, as long as you both were on the same page about what we want the film to be when we watch it that kind of could put an end to anything. Um, but that was pretty much a good breakdown of how we would do it. When it came to fight scenes, it sort of was an all hands on deck situation, but it becomes more of a technical dance with your stunt team then, and you work with them. Funny enough, the stunt stuff, the action stuff, I actually found the easiest to do. Um, just in terms of, there'd be so much like when, I don't know, the intense dialogue scenes were just like, you were so in it and that tension was real. And you get to the fight and it was just very controlled chaos, you know? And it's like, <laughs> you watch the stunt team and you just go chunk by chunk by chunk by chunk by chunk. And the next thing you know, the fights, you're over and you're like, oh, well, shit, that's it. That's, Ta -da. that's it. That's great. And um, I mean, it was very happy to say, like, we did everything practically on set too. Like, no, there's not a single drop of digital blood in this movie. That's all real. It's all there. It's all guys actually bouncing off of mirrors. Yeah, it's all bouncing yes. off of mirrors and getting their throats really slit. So. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, no, no. Snuff film. That's why it yeah, looks yeah. so real and yeah, smells exactly. so awful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if only we had smell o vision Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't have made it through. <laughs> so you guys shot this very quickly. Um, do you think it, it, it helped that you were able to kind of team up? Because, you know, in any situation, it's kind of like, God, I wish I had like two of me. But you guys kind of were able to do that by teaming up and like each focusing primarily on something. So did that help you with like shooting very quickly? Yeah, because we come from the same school of filmmaking in a sense, not actual literal sense of film. We never went to film school. We've always made films and in, are independently. So we and we're from the same area. So it's kind of like we come from the same camp, so to speak. So it's very easy to have an unspoken language with each other and what we need to get done. Yeah. And I think it's the reality of it. it's like the movie is the way it is because we came together to make it. And I don't, it wouldn't have been the same movie if he made it or I made it separately. It's yeah. because we came, to, it's, it's, it's like a perfect marriage of our, our, our sensibilities for sure. So, yes. um, yeah. but yeah, it definitely helped the two of us being on it and kind of figuring out what the dynamics of it were going to be. So. Awesome. Got the alchemy of the duo at work yes. here. Yes. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you guys would like to share with us in particular? I think my favorite part of making the movie was actually post. <laughs> really? yeah. I felt like even though we hit like Corona pandemic level 1000, pretty much as soon as we went into the studio with it, the actual post process of making the movie was really smooth compared to the actual physical making of it. Um, <laughs> Because like the editing of it, like it came to the edit, the first edit of it came together really fast. You're and, a fast editor. And we didn't have a whole lot of notes for it either. Like the uh, the team we were working with, our producers, Avi and Raven Banner, like they were pretty happy with our first edit of the movie. We had minimal cuts since then. We added one or two quick scenes. Like we went and shot two quick new scenes to add to the movie. Um, but other than that, it was so smooth. And just my favorite parts were Gabe and I working together with him doing the score and me doing the edit and just like I'd share clips with him and he'd share music with me and we'd bounce back and forth like oh this is cool and you know I'd, I'd go to him I'd be on the phone and I'd be like I'm thinking something like dun -ka -da -dun -ta -da -dun -ta -da -da. you're like yeah 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 I've got it I've got it and then an hour <laughs> later I'd have his interpretation of that and that process that's when I felt like we really felt like a good collaboration like that's when it was working at its best is just that teamwork and it's interesting too because originally the film wasn't going to have any score um it was gonna we we're just gonna play it out as is and then it started being like oh we'll put in some tonal elements and then gabe started sending me tracks and i'm like it would be pretty cool if i just shuffle this in here and then or you're like take out the beats yeah take out the beat well yeah <laughs> some of it had too many beats in it so it like a dance club. That movie. yeah <laughs> but then at a certain point i mean i think there's like it's this it's this 
what it's an 80 minute movie and it's got like 70 minutes worth of music in it now so it, i got yeah i completely fell in love with that score he made and it was a good it was a it was a really good teamwork doing it but um it was interesting having to do post audio on a movie during a pandemic though because you oh. couldn't be usually you, you're able to go into the sound studio and work with them mm -hmm. but we had to do it all through chats like this or emails and phone calls and it was Boy, it was frustrating. <laughs> it was... Oh, I can imagine. But how fun yeah. to have somebody that you can collaborate with on that level, though. Yes. You literally call them and go like, I'm thinking, dun, 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 and he's like, okay, yeah. yeah. And then he sends oh. you and you're like, yeah, that's it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was, like, that's that like the dream is to have somebody where you can just collaborate and your brains are just like, zoom, like synced up and you're just so on the same page. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And so it was... <laughs> And I mean, hey, I mean, we got a movie that we're both proud of. I mean, it's, yeah. it's cool. It, it turned out, I think at a certain point, we realized, I'm like, oh, this actually turned out better than I think we both thought it would after that shoot. Because <laughs> after that shoot, after I think we were really like, shoot. actually, you know what? No, I'll, I'll change it. Gabe always had faith in this movie. He knew <laughs> that it was, there was like, he knew that there was something there. After we were done shooting, I'm like, fuck this. I don't even know. Like, there's, this a, there's, a, there's a weirdness to the movie that works. Yeah, I'm like, I thought this movie's going to be a disaster. It's not going to work. Like, then I started editing it, and I was like, all right, all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Like, it's, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I think the one thing that I'm disappointed, it's nowhere near as violent or gory as the script was. I wish... Wow, really? It was way you more should, graphic. You, should, you shouldn't be saying this because we know that Fangoria's review now is going to be like, this movie <laughs> does not work. It could have been <laughs> way more gorier and violent. It just, yeah, it's fine. I, I think that the original, our shooting script was so incredibly graphic yeah. that it's like we got a fraction of that on camera. So, Can you give me an example of some, like, some form of violence that was cut from it? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's two there's there's three bits that I really miss. So one of them's a spoiler, so I'll kind of dance around it. So one of them is in the bathroom fight. You know, okay, so blah, blah, they fall into the bathroom, he slits the guy's throat, and that's pretty much where it ends in the movie. Well, in the script, like the slit throat's not enough. The guy still keeps trying to fight with the slit throat. So Chris reaches his hand into the throat oh. and rips out his <laughs> esophagus and shows it to him and we shot a version of it and it just doesn't work you'll see it on the blu-ray it's just it's i can't it's just it's really bad it doesn't work but just the like just him ripping this thing out and showing it to him just to go the extra mile Blech. it was so <laughs> gross and then we had another scene where um they take a table leg in one of the fights and they're using it as a bat and he snaps it over his, his knee so it's got like the jagged ripped end and in the in one of the kitchen fights, he pins a guy to the fridge and he shoves the leg into his eye. Oh, and then like God. sort of rips it out and it just leaves this jagged, like ripped <laughs> open hole. But the, the the one that I'm like most disappointed that it's in the movie, but it's not the way it was supposed to be, is one of the final kills of the movie where it doesn't matter who what who it happens to, but in the script, it was so incredibly gory because it's like this guy messes up his face, then he climbs on top of him and uses his hands and essentially disembowels him and rips his stomach open and reaches his hands inside. And it ended with the guy just spewing blood into the air. And it was just, I pictured it as like this slow motion, just like fountain that goes up and rains down on Chris. And it was supposed to be like, that was like the, my disgusting like climax to this whole fight. Like just this fountain of blood and it just comes splattering down on him. And it's like this rain of blood and it's sort of, that's his catharsis. And uh, <laughs> it, I think it would have been great. I think it probably would have gone, now that we're seeing some of the reviews. Every time you explain that, it gets better and better. I know, it's, <laughs> but it's like the people that are seeing the movie now are like, this film is like already too violent. So <laughs> I think it might have gone too far, but that's, that's just a taste. There was some other stuff. We had a different ending too, which I was oh, particularly yeah. fond of, but we didn't get to do it, so. Well, I'm sorry those horribly grotesque bits were, were cut out of it, but I didn't feel like it went too far, like, because I don't, I'm not into that kind of stuff. That, that's yeah, just yeah. not my particular brand of horror. So I didn't feel like it went too far, but yeah. it was like, it was fun and disgusting. And I was like, okay, Jesus Christ, like, this is fucking vicious. Like, this is brutal. <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> so I think it still landed in a good, a good area of like, mm -hmm, yeah, vicious. It's yeah. disgusting and brutal Perfect. and violent. That's, that's, what kind of horror is up your alley? 
Just curious. I just like like fun horror, you know? Like, I do like to see things being disemboweled and things like that. Not, like, to a torture porn level, but yeah, just on a, a way where you're like, oh, fuck! Like, that kind of, like, if I can watch it with my friends and we're screaming at the screen, like, oh! Like, that to <laughs> me is, like, the most fun kind of horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I, I, I caught a random horror film last night. I think it was on Amazon Prime or Netflix called What Lies Below? I've been hearing things about this and I haven't seen it yet. It's really interesting. Is At it? first okay. I was like, okay. And then it got going. I'm like, I don't know why I'm still watching this. This is just really weird and awkward and creepy. Mm. And then the end you're like, oh, this is weird. This is good. I liked it. And the more I think about it, the more I liked it. Even like more and more and more. I love those types of, you know, those yes. films where you can you it's it's really cool. Okay, what I'm gonna try and below. watch that one soon. What lies yeah. below? Yeah. Did you guys see Honeydew? Did you watch that one yet? Ooh, how do I watch that? Um, it's just I think it just started streaming yesterday. So I think okay. it's on like all like major platforms to rent. Honeydew. I'm gonna write that down. Honeydew. But that's okay. one I it, and this rarely happens, but I kind of had to just sit silently for a little bit afterwards, just kind of like digesting what I watched. <laughs> and I was like, huh. But in a good way. <laughs> Those are usually the best kind of movies, so there's they another are, one called because... Tilt. Tilt. Tilt on Amazon Prime. And it's really good, and it's a it's a movie with just two actors, two performers, and it's really good. It's 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 ah, uh, it's called T I L T Tilt. Tilt. Okay, I'll yeah. check that one out. See, that's yeah. always interesting to me too because I'm like, it takes a lot to take something very very bare bones like that, like two actors, one location, and you guys yeah. did this with like a minimal cast in one location as well. But when it's like you you're working with like the bare bones that you can do and then you have to write something and make that intriguing and interesting like that i'm always fascinated by because that's not an easy thing to do no 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 no. so when it works i'm like hell yes that's impressive (laughs) you're you're working with not very many things to 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 make this interesting here yeah (laughs) all right do you guys want to talk about any upcoming projects uh nothing that we can talk like say officially secrets okay yeah (laughs) Yeah, we're working on two. We have two separate projects that we're doing um, that we're still working on together, but we're both directing separately. And I think okay. they're both pretty cool and I'm, I'm excited for people to see them. And yeah. I think that um, I hope they'll deliver on what we, we think they deliver on. So. <laughs> nice, um, okay. Yeah, uh, but it's been a pleasure. I, like, I cannot express to you my love for, I'm, I know everybody does this, but my love for Fangoria goes back. I know. Like it's it's insane. I my first issue I got it was purchased by my grandmother. A used bookstore. It was issue number ten with scanners on the cover. Uh. with like the exploding head where they used one of the alternate takes and like I've, I've in my in my cold room I've got an airtight sealed just bin of Fangoria magazines. Oh my god, so, that's um, amazing. Yeah, the fact that we're talking with you on this platform for Fangoria, like it's just like it's a dream yeah. come true. So and I mean this is a film that's bred out of you know watching reading fangoria and right. seeing those recommendations and it's 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 pretty cool so that's my little fanboy moment there we go no i love <laughs> that I, I that's how i feel honestly anytime i get to do this kind of stuff because i'm like holy shit this is for fango that's that's cool like 12 year old yeah. me like my head is doing the scanners like <laughs> yeah. yeah awesome amazing so i love talking with because the, the fun thing about this is like we're all fans. So I yeah. love getting to talk to you guys about the movie that you made, but it's because we're fans of the same thing. And then it's like, now you're creating new stuff based on that fandom. And it's just, it's a lot of fun to get to yeah. do these chats. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So thank you guys. Okay. So for the sake of vicious is going to be streaming. Oh, and select theaters, April 16th on demand, April 20th and on Blu-ray May 4th. So everyone Correct. check that out in yes. theaters. That's wild. That's as fun well. to say. I that wish we awesome. could see it, not for us, but... Yeah, we haven't seen it in theaters, and we did make this movie, I think, with that in mind, it's just the sound and the bit, like... Because when you see a movie in a theater, like, when you go to film festivals and stuff, and you watch a movie the first time in the, in the theater, and then you watch it later, it's not the same. It's never no. the same. It needs to be yeah. in the theaters. No. Especially stuff like this. It's very much like a communal experience. Like it's that that thing, that phenomenon I was talking about earlier. Like I wish this is one that I'd watched with friends because yeah. I know it would be like throat slit. Oh, like, and that just yeah. like enhances it so much when everyone's just like, oh, fuck, you know, like just kind of yeah. losing their minds over it. This is yeah. a movie that's going to do that. So. Yeah. And I really hope we get that chance because, I mean, we've watched it on our computers and a couple tvs like that's the biggest screen we saw it on is when we premiered at fantasia you set up a little gabe set up a little like uh projector on his wall and and that was that was our little premiere but other than that like we really haven't got to experience it 
on a screen much bigger than that. So yeah, I hope we get a chance because yeah, there's some sequences there where we're like, this would, especially the bathroom fight, like <laughs> love to see that with an audience. So yeah, one day. I one day. I'm excited for when you guys do get to experience this communally the way it was intended to be, because I think yeah. that's going to be just on a whole nother level for you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, we really hope. I mean, I just hope everybody enjoys it. You know, it's just, you know, get a kick out of it and have fun, kick back, relax and enjoy our crazy Canadian unbridled, <laughs> untamed uncut minds you know so yeah. <laughs> crazy canadian kitchen courtroom violence <laughs> yes there we go perfect we've created a new genre there you go yeah. i needed something for that last bit because i'm a sucker for alliteration but it's, it'll come to me later <laughs> That's perfect. That's great. all right thank you guys so much everyone go check check out for the sake of vicious it is indeed quite vicious come for the throat slits stay for the blood splatter <laughs> 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 if you're not signed up to Fangoria, go do that. And you can find me at horgoproblems.com. All the socials are there. And thank you guys so much, Reese and Gabe. This was awesome. Congratulations on this. Everyone thank you. go have fun with this movie. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Absolutely. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.